Hey everyone, I hope you're doing good today. Today I have a pretty insightful video if you've been working through SQL Server Express editions and maybe you're feeling like the effects of that, you know, you're not really able to do as much as you would in a fully featured version of SQL Server. Well, luckily Microsoft is moving in the right direction and uh, we can now use the developer edition of SQL Server 100% for free. So I'm gonna link this website down in the description of the video. But basically when you come in here, you're gonna see all these little boxes. Basically this first dark blue one is going to be for SQL Server 2017 Enterprise Edition. You don't want that. The free trial is only gonna last you 180 days and then you're, you're basically ass out. So what's your next option? The SQL Server in the cloud? Well, do you use Azure? Probably not. So we're gonna go ahead and skip over that one as well and continue our scroll. So if you scroll down, you'll see this developer edition right here. The developer edition of SQL Server is fully featured and free. It's licensed for use as a development and test database in a non-production environment, which is basically like saying um, if you've used the community version of uh, Visual Studio, that's basically this. Um, you're not a full business, you're not an enterprise, so here you go. Here's your version of SQL Server. It's better than Express because you have the ability to um, pair it with like Team Foundation Server, uh, SQL Server data tools such as SQL Server reporting services and SQL Server integration services. And then I believe you can connect to SQL Server analysis services as well, but we're not gonna be doing that. I will definitely show you how to do SSRS and SSIS though, all day. So anyways, go ahead and click that. It'll, you'll hit the download now button, it'll run. And keep in mind, this is just for the SQL Server itself. This is not for the Management Studio, and this is, does not get you your data tools such as SSRS, Visual Studio, um, SSIS, SSAS, any of that stuff. So click on this, run it. I recommend personally uninstalling any prior versions of SQL Server before you do this but that's just me. You can do it however you want. There's just gonna be some sort of differences along the line. You'll have to know which one you're connecting to and all that, but we'll get there. All right, so once that's all finished, I want you to come down and grab this little link right here and then also open this one. SSMS is your SQL Server Management Studio. That's where you're gonna write out all your queries, your databases, whatever you need to do, that's where you do it. SQL Server Data Tools is like an extension, a package of tools, if you will. That's where your SSRS Visual Studio extensions and SSIS integration services are gonna be. So go ahead and click on those. When you get over to the Management Studio tab, this is what it'll look like. Basically, this is like your books online for SQL Server Management Studio, but this is just really the download page, but you can explore other things over here. Go ahead and click on Download SQL Server Management Studio 17.9. If you already have Management Studio 17 point something installed, go ahead and click this bottom link. That will upgrade you from your current version to 17.9. So, okay, pick your version click on it, let it run, and then come back. When that is all done, I want you to click on the third link, linked website that I have in my video. This is a website from Itzik Ben Gon, who is a very informative author on SQL Server querying. Um, I've believe he does stuff on the internals of SQL Server as well. I don't know that he hits too much on the administrative side of SQL Server, though I'm sure he's informed on it as well. But anyways, these are like his sample databases. If you're like me, you're going to hate working with AdventureWorks, Northwind, whatever they're on these days. I think it's Worldwide Importers or Wide World Importers, something like that. All those databases suck. They're complete garbage. They don't give you any real world experience whatsoever. They're clunky. They're harder to install. You need to go into your data folder, save the MDF and the log file, and then do like a manual attach process. I don't really care to go through all that for simplicity reasons. 
And if you're not going to go be a DBA, you don't really need to go do all that stuff. However, it's like been gone has the source code for these databases. So if you click to download the T-SQL v4 sample database and then the performance v3 sample database, they'll pop into your downloads. So go ahead and open both of those and then go ahead and paste them out of that location and onto your desktop preferably. Though you can probably choose a different file of your choosing, just make sure it's somewhere not in a compressed folder that a uh, SQL Server can access it. So then once that's done, go ahead and highlight both of them and open them. Press connect and connect again. So over here, I just want to show you again, I don't have any of these databases connected already. Uh, you can check the system databases and the database snapshots. There is nothing. So, okay. Just fix that out real quick. Anywho, when you first come in to the performance V3 database, it is crucial that you follow these instructions to a T. You will error out, your query will get stuck running, and you'll have to close the entire SQL Server Management Studio and then reopen. It's just annoying. You'll have to delete whatever little bit of the database that it did end up creating. So just follow my instructions. Highlight the first two lines, set no count on, and use master F5. Then highlight the following, if DBID through the second go after use performance V3. From there, we are going to drop down to right where it says definition of gitnums function, all the way down to the go, run it, and then skip down right under the data distribution settings for orders. And you can run this all the way to the go that's above the data distribution settings for DW, and then press F5. That'll run for a few seconds. Basically, you're creating your tables, maybe a couple views, and then putting all your constraints and keys, setting up everything. And you can scroll through and read all this. Um, the reason I also like to do it this way is you see the syntax of various things that he is creating within this database. So here, you can see what a create table syntax looks like. You can see him doing an insert into with a select statement. There's great examples of code in here that you can use. So that's my preferred method and why I prefer this way. You can see all these different calculations he's doing in here. And if you don't understand it, the great thing that we have in this world today is Google. Google can teach you anything. There's no reason not to know something in this time that we live in. So anyways, when that is finally done, you can just hit Control Shift end highlighting right beneath the data distribution settings for DW and then run that last part. All right, now that that one has finished, we can close it. I'm personally not going to save it, but that's just me. Because it's already on my desktop number one and the only thing I changed was to add some spacing in there just for readability. It's not that important. Okay, so the T-SQL V4 has instructions in it. Basically, all you have to do is create the database, set yourself to use the database, and then it says to proceed to section C. So we will proceed to section C and highlight control shift and highlight all the way down to the bottom, F5. And now that database is created. So we can close it now. 
Okay, now over here you're not going to see them immediately. We need to right click on databases and press refresh. So once that's done, expand them again and you'll see both databases right here. You'll see that all the tables are there. We have our V4 tables. So I just want to touch again on one thing that I had mentioned earlier that the Microsoft sample databases don't really give you real world experience. And I'm going to be honest, these ones aren't going to give you real world experience either. In a real world um, enterprise production environment, you're most likely going to encounter uh, scenarios where you're going to have to query in and out of multiple databases within a stored procedure or whatever you're creating, a function maybe, a uh, trigger, whatever. You're going to have to be in and out of multiple databases to get the data that you're specifying. And, and sometimes, say, you're going from one database to another and you do have those key columns that are holding the same exact data, they are not the same data type. What I mean by that is, say, you have an ID in one tables database and that same ID in another tables database or a databases table. One is set up as an integer and the other is set up as, let's say, a varying character. When you join on those, SQL Server will automatically convert them to match one another's data type and then join. However, performance takes an impact when you do that. So that, that's what I'm saying, like all these tables being perfectly in sync with one another, that does not happen in the real world. The real world, you get bad data entry. You get your data from multiple sources. It's not all the same. Pending who your database administrator was or the person that developed your databases, they were either extremely thorough and efficient at what they did, or they just kind of sometimes took the lazier route and they just kind of went off of off on the whim and we're just creating things so it's hit or miss what you're going to run into out there in the world i'm not trying to scare you or play say that everyone's data sucks but if you've been working with data for x amount of years you already know that data sucks it, that's just the cold hard truth at the end of the day you do what you can to make data pretty but that's my little rant on those databases but anywho one last thing i did want to show you is you can come into a new query and just write out the select at at, not pound pound, at at version and run F5 and that'll give you your Microsoft SQL Server 2017. And then over here it'll give you your edition. So we see the developer edition right here. So there you have it, a free fully functioning version of SQL Server and two databases that you can go play around with. I hope you have fun with these. Also, if you could do me a huge, huge favor and smash the like button if you found this helpful, leave a comment, engage with me. Um, you can hit my blog up as well. That'll be in the description. But I hope you guys did like it and subscribe if you do. And then hit me up if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them.